The top stories tonight in Y News. The Philippines moved up in the latest edition of the DK COVID-19 Recovery Index thanks to the declining infection numbers. The country recorded today its lowest single-day tally in 17 months. However, the Okta Research Group warrants of another surge of COVID-19 is possible by January of next year. The number of jobless Filipinos fell last October, boosted by the continued easing of quarantine restrictions. The Biden administration has decided to not send an official U.S. delegation to the 2022 Winter Olympics in a rebuke to Beijing. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Quezon City, and today is Tuesday, December 7, 2021. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I'm Angelo Castro III. First in the news, the Philippines jumped from 103rd to 57th in an international COVID-19 recovery ranking based on infection control, vaccination, and mobility. The palace says this proves that the COVID-19 interventions of the government are working. Rosalie Cos explains why. Malacanang is elated after the Philippines improved its ranking in the COVID-19 Recovery Index of Tokyo-based business media group Nikkei Asia. From 121st in September and 103rd in October, the Philippines slipped to 57th place last month. Acting Presidential Spokesperson and Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles said this shows that the COVID-19 strategies and interventions of the government are working. This latest Nikkei Asia COVID-19 Recovery Index is a clear indication that we have successfully contained the highly transmissible Delta variant. Malinaw pong palatandaan ito. The strategies we have in place and the interventions being undertaken by your government are working. President Rodrigo Duterte hopes that the COVID-19 situation in the country will get better. This is why the government will hold another massive national vaccination drive from December 15 to 17. The Department of Health said the government eyes to administer 7 million second doses during these three days. This is amid the new pandemic threat due to Omicron variant. We will have a second round of Bayanihan Bakunahan from December 15 to 17. I hope that you would have the same success uh, at this time, lesser because parang naubos na natin ang Pilipino sa yung what counts uh, sa bakuna. Uh, kaya medyo there's a slowdown of uh, the COVID-19. I must urge you to get vaccinated because Omicron, when it arrives in the Philippines, will find every unvaccinated Filipino and you will get sick. And even though it is mild, it is still, it is still COVID-19. And we do not want to put ourselves and our beloved uh, family members, especially our lolos and lolas, it, into, we do not want to risk them, to risk their lives and their well-being and their livelihoods, especially at this time. The palace once again asked the public to continue to be vigilant and alert against COVID-19 as the holiday season approaches. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines logged 300, 356 new COVID-19 cases today, the lowest single-day tally in the last 17 months. The new figure was the lowest since July 2, 2020, when the country recorded 294 cases at that time. The nationwide tally of confirmed infections stood at 2,835,345. The Department of Health said the latest count brought the country's active cases to 13,026. Of these cases, 5,314 are mild, 3,900 are moderate, 
2,326 are severe and 899 have no symptoms and 587 are in critical condition. Meanwhile, total recoveries rose to 2,772,728 after 871 more patients recovered from the disease. COVID-related deaths climbed to 49,591 with 92 new fatalities. All accredited testing laboratories in the country were operational on December 5, but five laboratories failed to submit data on time. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached 266,475,891, while the deaths have surged to 5,262,887, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 49,278,724 and 789,745 respectively. This is followed by India and Brazil. Meanwhile, health officials and experts are in favor of keeping the National Capital Region or NCR under alert level 2. Meanwhile, the Okta Research Group projects another surge of COVID-19 cases in the country by January next year. Aiko Miguel explains why. The Interagency Task Force will have a meeting on Thursday to discuss whether to de-escalate the alert level in the country. The country still remains under alert level 2. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said it is better to keep the alert level to status for now as people will be more mobile during the holiday season. Pero para sa akin, dapat siguro tama lang maratili muna tayo sa alert level 2. Bakit ka mo? Una-una ay uh, ang uh, mobility, tataas na naman ngayong uh, kapaskuhan. Alam natin yan, no? Uh, at meron nagmamadyang uh, o bata ng Omicron. Anyway, malaki-laki na rin ang bahagi ng ekonomiya na buksan natin. No? Mm -hmm. Sa under the alert level 2 at ang mga establishmento, Uh, uh, 50%. Acting Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Carlo Nograles shares the same sentiment as the health chief. Well, we're monitoring Omicron very closely, no? At inaabangan din po namin kung ano yung magiging um, final na uh, uh, findings, no? Uh, mula sa WHO at mula sa ating mga health experts um, internationally as well, no? Uh, because everyone is monitoring kung ito bang Omicron are, is more fatal. No? Yun yung pinaka inaabangan natin, yung, uh, if, if it is more fatal, if it is more severe, if it is indeed more transmissible. So we still await the final word from the WHO. Samantalang, uh, finalize rin po namin ano yung mga uh, final parameters natin for alert level 1. The DOH is also awaiting for the World Health Organization's concrete study on the Omicron variant to help them decide measures for the prevention and mitigation of COVID-19 outbreaks due to Omicron. Independent analytics group Octa Research is also in favor to keep the alert level to status in the country. If there was no threat of a new variant, pwede naman tayo actually, you know, it's possible to de-escalate because we are at very low risk based on our metrics. So, yung positivity rate natin sa Metro Manila, it's 1%, which is below the 3% uh, standard ng CDC, which is dating a 5% lang hinahabol natin ngayon. We're at 1%. On the other hand, Professor David also warns of another possible surge once Omicron enters the country. Based on initial studies, if an individual with Delta variant can infect 5 to 8 more, a person infected with Omicron variant can infect twice as much as a Delta variant carrier. It is more transmissible based on the data that we're seeing from South Africa. If, if it's twice that's a Omicron, then we're expecting one person with Omicron will infect 10 to 16 uh, other people. Most likely on timeline at and maybe around January or February, uh, baka magkaroon ng disruption. Um, it may not be a massive surge, baka, baka a slight surge, but it, you know, it will still affect our, the number of cases.
Okta Research Group also has a projection of 200 COVID-19 cases per day in the country. Once Filipinos keep being responsible and observant in the implemented health and safety protocols in the country, the government should also not remove face mask mandate and other protocols to prevent any resurgence of COVID-19. Aiko Miguel, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Statistics Authority reports that the rate of the increase in consumer prices continued to decelerate for the third consecutive month in November due to slowdown in food costs. Data from the PSA reveals that the inflation rate further eased to 4.2% last month from 4.6% in October. However, it is still higher compared with the 3.3% seen in November 2020, the latest inflation print brought the 11-month average at 4.5%, still above the government's target ban of 2.0% to 4%. From 4.25 million, the number of unemployed Filipinos hits 3.5 million in October, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. More Filipinos were able to find jobs as quarantine restriction eases in the country, the PSA said. So makikita natin na uh, habang uh, ito ay nakikita naman natin in the past ano, na uh, pag uh, nagkakaroon ng uh, uh, relaxation ng restriction ay uh, talagang uh, tumataas uh, or maraming nag-participate at maraming nakahanap ng trabaho. So dito nakita natin na uh, bumaba yung ating unemployment rate. Malacanang says more business establishments and industries are reopening for the country's economic recovery, creating more jobs for our fellow men. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases placed the entire country under Alert Level 2 after the country records low COVID-19 cases. To quote our economic managers, the country's economic performance has exceeded expectations in 2021. The road ahead remains challenging, but we assure the Filipino people that we have all the elements in place to recover quickly and strongly from the pandemic and grow rapidly in the years to come. However, for the Department of Labor and Employment, the October record is still high compared to the unemployment rate recorded before the world has struck by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are still Filipinos in need of jobs. Malaki pa rin yan kung titingnan po natin dahil uh, nabanggit ko po due to the pre-pandemic situation po natin ang ating unemployment rate ay sa mga 5.1% uh, lamang po yan which is equivalent to around 2.4 million. But ngayon po, yung ating uh, 7.4 uh, million, 7.4% uh, that's equivalent to 3.5, so malaki-laki pa rin po yung ating kakabulit. And alam naman po natin na kahit nagbukas na po ang ating ekonomiya, may mga restrictions pa rin po tayo, like yung ating pong mga bakunadong empleyado, hindi pa rin po, ay yung mga hindi pa bakunado, ay uh, may limitations pa rin po sila sa pagpasok po ng, uh, sa kanilang mga kagawaan po. To assist unemployed Filipinos, the Labor Department launched a job fair where 7,000 job offers are available abroad, while 30,000 job opportunities are open here in the country. Dole launched its first face-to-face -face job fair two years since the pandemic. Countries such as Japan, Germany, and United Kingdom are in need of cooks, waiters, and construction workers. While several companies in the country are looking for customer service representatives, production workers, salesmen, office staff, kitchen crew, sewer, and sales associates. The job fair is open for workers who lost their jobs due to the pandemic, overseas Filipino workers who returned home, recent graduates, and out-of-school youth. Interested applicants can register online at jobquest.ph. They can also visit Dolet's website and social media accounts for the schedules and venues of its job fair, which will be open until December 13. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Senate has passed in second reading a measure seeking to extend the validity of the 2021 national budget until December of next year. Eileen Delgado will tell us why. 
House Bill 10373, seeking to extend the validity of the appropriations under the 2021 national budget until December 31, 2022, has hurdled second reading in the Senate. The House of Representatives passed the measure on November 29. However, Senator Panfilo Lakson issued a dissenting opinion, noting that extending the national budget has always been the case since 2018 due to inability of implementing agencies to fully utilize the budget. The government shifted from obligation-based budgeting system to a cash-based budgeting system since 2019. According to the Budget Department, under the obligation-based budgeting system, contracts awarded and payments can be done without predetermined time limit and not limited to one year. While in cash-based, the obligations and disbursement of payments should be done within the fiscal year. Are we not condoning to the point of institutionalizing the inefficiency of the implementing agencies. Why don't we just scrap uh, the section uh, uh, specifying the uh, utilization of the appropriations for a period of one year instead of uh, you know passing legislation year in and year out? Senate Finance Committee Chairperson Sonny Angara says a provision under the 2022 national budget will be included to try a hybrid cash-based and obligation-based budgeting system. Two years will be allotted for both obligating and disbursing of funds. Sa old system, parang mabagal, kaya may underspending, kaya nag-cash-based budgeting tayo. Doon sa cash-based budgeting, masyado namang paspasan, hindi na kayanan po ng mga ahensya. Kaya we're trying to do something in between. Citing DBM's data, Angara says from January to September 2021, only 74.5% of the allotments available under the current budget have been obligated or legally set aside to be spent for government projects, programs, or activities. The Senate eyes to pass the bill on third and final reading on Monday, December 13. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Bazaars start popping up in different areas in Metro Manila as the holiday season nears. The private sector anticipates a steady economic recovery amid the threat of a new COVID-19 variant. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. The high vaccination rate against COVID-19 in the country and the stringent adherence in the minimum public health standards among the citizens have so far proved to have lowered the infection and the risk of the deadly virus. With this, the private sector is optimistic that the country would be able to continuously recover from the crisis brought about by the pandemic. Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship Joey Concepcion explains these despite the threat of the Omicron variant. Our assumption is Omicron is going to be like a Delta, maybe milder but more infectious. So assuming that is correct, then we're better off. No? I think we will be able to sustain the economic recovery all the way till the year 2022. Concepcion, however, emphasized they are keeping their guard up to avoid another COVID-19 case surge. On the other hand, some entrepreneurs who recently reopened their stalls in bazaars across Metro Manila take extra precautions to avoid the spread of the virus, especially with the threat of its new variant. Siyempre, medyo nangangamba, kaya nga sana nga lahat po. Sumunod na lang kung ano yung mga sinasabi, mga health protocol, sumunod na lang tayo para yung kung ano man yung mga dumadating na pagbabanta, maiwasan pa rin natin. Yun lang na ngamba din kami sir, pero fully vaccinated naman kami lahat dito and sana mag-aware din yung mga tao na mag-physical distancing din po. Private sectors and concerned government agencies are set to meet to discuss further measures to sustain the lowering cases and the economic recovery. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Public Works and Highways launched a job assistance program for the youth and displaced workers. J.P. Nunez reports. To question the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on youth and those who lost their job, the Department of Public Works and Highways will hire 10,000 workers all over the country. Participants will be part of DPWH Road Maintenance Project. Street sweeping, painting barriers, vegetation control, howling, waste materials, drainage declogging, cleaning of street signs, and removal of posters are among the scope of their works. Uh, nakita namin na maraming mga mamamayan natin na 
uh, naglakad-lakad dyan, nanghingi ng ayuda sa ating mga uh, uh, pas, uh, passers by na mga vehicles dyan sa, sa ating uh, Ross Boulevard, sa mga highways natin dito, sa IDSA, maski paano, uh, through our uh, maintenance of our highways, uh, madagdagan ng uh, empleyado ang paglinis uh, ng ating uh, ating uh, kalsada. DPWH explains that with the assistance program, individuals will be given opportunity for employment to support their family needs. They will be given daily minimum wage under job orders. Uh, sila'y pinipili first and foremost yung mga yung nandyan talaga sa kalsada. No? Yan. Pangalawa, yung mga, yung kanina, yung mga single parent, yung mga kabataan natin na kailangan rin lang tulong para maka, makapag-aral. At uh, talagang yung mga nangangailangan talaga, yun ang priority natin. At uh, mga kababaihan na kailangan rin nilang uh, tumulong sa kanilang uh, 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 husband or sa, sa kanilang pamilya. At... Uh, Ang ating binibigay is uh, minimum wage uh, around mga 550 pesos a day. The newly hired workers were thankful for the program since it can help with their daily needs. Isa po ako sa natanggap dito sa ayudang to kasi po malaki tulong po talaga sa akin lalo na po may may isa po akong anak. Syempre, ang hanap buhay lang po ng asawa ko isang mangingisda. Hindi po talaga sapat yung kita. Minsan po, minsan po, kakaunti lang doon, minsan wala po talaga. Uh, makatulong po ang ayuda sa akin na sa pag-aaral ko po, po, tapos po sa mawawa ko pong income na pwede pong igamit sa pag-aaral ko. Isang araw po, may nakapagsabi sa akin na may tanggapan po sa DPWH. Ang sabi ko po ay, bakit ako mag-apply? Ang DPWH ay tabaw ng isang lalaki, yun ako po ay nagkamali. Kaya po, nung tumat, pumunta po ako sa opisina para mag-apply at ako po'y natanggap, ako po'y nagpapasalamat at nalaman ko po ako anong trabaho na kaya nung pala ng isang babae. Isang parangal at isente yung trabaho po ang binigay po ng DPWH. DPWH targets the Ayuda program to last until next year where a portion of their 9 billion budget for road maintenance from General Appropriations Act will be allotted for the program. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Lawmakers from the House of Representatives expressed their dismay over the no vaccine, no work, and no vaccine, no pay policies introduced by the interagency task force that aims to increase the vaccination rate in the country. Nel Marie Buhok will tell us why. Workers from the province of Bataan are virtually present in the hearing conducted by the House Committee on Labor and Employment. They requested anonymity to the lawmakers as they presented their experience in the implementation of the No Job, No Work policy. Mula po nung December 1, hindi na po kami pinapasok. At dahil wala daw po kaming vaccine, no work, no pay, ayun po. The unnamed workers said they cannot afford the RT-PCR test which according to them cost around 5,000 pesos. Yung RT-CPR test na sinasabi nila, every two weeks po, nasa sarili namin gastos, saan po namin kukunin yun? Yung sa araw-araw po na pangangailangan namin, sir, hindi po namin kakayanin yung ganong ipinapatapat. House Committee on Labor and Employment Chairperson Eric Pineda expresses disappointment with the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. He said the IATF has no response with the House panel's letter recommending the suspension of the mandatory vaccination of on-site workers. Wala man lang sagot sa amin, ni Hani ko eh. Di sana uh, tumawag man lang sila o nagparamdam man lang sila. But the way we feel it, uh, especially my committee members here, eh, para kami napapaya dito eh. Para hindi kami binibigyan ng importansya ng mga amo ninyo. DOH IATF Secretary and Undersecretary Charid Mercado Grande said that IATF resolutions is now under review. The matter is already under the uh, um, review and discussion po, Mr. Chair. 
Last December 1, the House panel requests the IATF to suspend the IATF Resolutions 148B and 149 concerning the mandatory vaccination of workers. According to TUCP Party List Representative Raymond Mendoza, the said resolutions create a lot of confusions to stakeholders. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. A group of Ilocanos and petitioners from La Union argue that the alleged Solid North will not happen anymore. Dante Amento tells us why live. Uh, yes, uh, Dante, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, William. Pudno nga Ilocano, a group of Ilocanos from La Union has joined the other petitioners against the candidacy of presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. They filed the fourth disqualification case before the Commission on Elections today. The petitioners stress that they will not that they will never support the candidacy of Marcos. Tatlo kami dito, nandito, arasan ng martial law, natikman namin. Hindi tunay na bayani si Marcos. The group urges the poll body to grant the instant petition for disqualification and perpetually disqualify the respondent from running for any elective post. The petitioners also argue it was clearly erroneous when the Court of Appeals omitted the imprisonment penalty of Marcos over his conviction in 1995 for tax evasion case. It was also anomalous for the Court of Appeals to actually remove the imprisonment uh, because the conviction of uh, Marcos Jr. was affirmed by the Court of Appeals except that it removed imprisonment. Currently, there are already eight petitions against the candidacy of Marcos in Comelec. These include four disqualification cases, three petitions seeking to cancel his COC, and one petition to declare him as nuisance candidate. But in a statement, Attorney Vic Rodriguez, Marcos's spokesperson, says all the petitions are now being addressed by their legal team. The Marcos camp maintains that the petitions are nothing but nuisance cases. They also urge those who are behind these complaints to respect the Filipino people and their right to decide for their future. William, yesterday, Comelec appealed to all parties who have pending cases before the poll body to refrain from speaking about the cases, particularly in public. And that's our latest live from Quezon City. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you. Dante Amento reporting live from Quezon City. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Leonardo Carlos warns field commanders who will fail to perform for the security of the 2022 elections. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Junardo Carlos is continuously assessing its field commanders on the preparation for the security of national elections. General Carlos said it is important that the field commanders are performing their job in line with the guidelines of the PNP organization. Pagka nakita namin na oh, parang you're lagging behind, you're not doing your job, then uh, I might uh, put somebody else who can do the job. Diba? Kasi kailangan kami lahat sumusunod. Kapag meron dyan na hindi siya sumusunod sa the, the desire of the organization for a peaceful election, then as early as now, we, actually I'm continually assessing the different uh, field commanders. So uh, that will also serve as a warning. The PNP aims to have a peaceful election, so the field commanders need to eliminate possible threats. This is not the time to relax. This is the time to perform. So I, I do not wish to fail. 
uh, on the task ahead. So as early as now, I've been telling them the, all the preparations. If they do not uh, uh, contribute, they are not distinctly contributing to the mission and function and the goals of the organization. I said, I will tell them, get out. General Carlos adds that those who will not perform their job well will be relieved from their post. There are other officers who are very much willing to be field commanders. So I have a big pool of uh, good officers that can take the job. The statement of General Carlos is in connection with the PNP's preparation for the security of elections in May. This includes the campaign against private armed groups, loose firearms and monitoring of politicians who may possibly use the service of PAGs to threaten voters and political opponents. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Authorities can still use several COVID-19 vaccines that have expired last month, according to the Department of Health or DOH. Denise Inhente reports why. COVID-19 vaccines that have expired were adjusted, allowing them to be used by authorities. According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, they coordinated with Pfizer-BioNTech to extend the shelf life of their vaccines to allow authorities to use up existing inventory. So, we have to tell you that we have to Pfizer, uh, yung nag uh, expire ay uh, inextend nila matapos nila na uh, ginagawa ang stability uh, uh, studies ng uh, kanilang bakuna inextend nila by three months Duque added that he talked with AstraZeneca representatives on Monday to also extend the shelf life of their anti-COVID vaccines Ngayon din ang gagawin nila uh, titignan nila kung ito mga uh, mga nag-expire nakakaunti naman hindi na magkaramihan I believe less than 1% no, uh, na nag-expire ay titigan kung uh, pwede rin ito uh, extend na hindi mababawasan ang kanyang uh, pagiging uh, effective and yung uh, safety niya ay uh, nasisiguro. Duque did not disclose how many vaccines were covered by the extended expiry date and does not yet determine the reason why the said vaccines reached the expiration date. The National Vaccination Operations Center said that the government is already investigating how many COVID-19 vaccines have expired and if it can still be used. Recently, around 14,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines have been reported to have expired in Negros Occidental. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Supreme Court spokesperson Brian Keith Hosaka confirms that the SC justices deliberated and voted on the Anti-Terrorism Act case today. Hosaka, however, clarified that due to the numerous issues to be resolved in the case, as well as the need for each magistrate to vote on issues being raised, the Supreme Court, he adds, needs to accurately confirm and tally the vote of each justice in order to ensure the correct resolution on the court. Chief Justice Alexander Gesmundo has recently disclosed that they might release the resolution on the 37 petitions assailing the constitutionality of the new anti-terror law before the year ends. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte has accepted U.S. President Joe Biden's invitation to participate in the Summit for Democracy on December 9-10, 2021. According to the U.S. State Department, President Biden will host a summit which will bring together leaders from government, civil society, and the private sector to set forth an affirmative agenda for democratic renewal and to tackle the greatest threats faced by democracies. The summit will be held virtually. President Biden, in his letter, said he looks forward to welcoming President Duterte and hearing his ideas on how they can foster a more democratic equitable, inclusive, and sustainable world. For the news abroad, U.S. President Joe Biden has decided to enforce a diplomatic boycott for both the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games. Marvi Delphine will tell us why, live. Good evening, Marvi. 
Good evening, Elsie. U.S. Press Secretary Jen Psaki of the Biden administration confirmed on a recent White House briefing that the boycott against the upcoming Beijing Olympics is to protest against the ongoing genocide and human rights violations in Xinjiang, China. According to Psaki, the administration wants to send a clear message against China's crimes against humanity and therefore will not be sending any official delegates to the Games this year. As the president has told President Xi, standing up for human rights is in the DNA of Americans. Uh, we have a fundamental commitment to promoting human rights, and we feel strongly in our position, and we will continue to take actions to advance human rights in China and beyond. Pisaki highlighted that although delegates will be pulled out, the event will still be considered as business as usual, but no contribution to the game's fanfare will be made. In addition to this, U.S. athletes will continue to participate in the games with full support from the whole country, which Pisaki says is to acknowledge their efforts in preparation and training for the games. The athletes on Team USA have our full support. We will be behind them 100% as we cheer them on from home. We will not be contributing to the fanfare of the Games. Biden's decision to boycott the Beijing Games was met with positive feedback from several political parties in the country, including Nancy Pelosi, Democratic House of Representatives spokesperson. LC China has already given a response against the boycott. Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian stated that the Games should not be a stage for political posturing and manipulation, and that China will take resolute countermeasures against this. LC. Marvi, are there other countries planning to join the boycott against Beijing? LC New Zealand has already decided to stand with the U.S. by sending their athletes but with no official delegates. Canada as well will send their athletic team but is yet to discuss other matters surrounding the issue. It is said that the U.K. and Australia are also yet to discuss whether or not to join the boycott but no official statements have been made yet. Back to you, LC. Thank you, Marvi Delphine, live from Australia. Australia has joined the international community in calling the release of Myanmar's deposed democratically elected leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, who has been sentenced to four years in detention on charges of incitement and breaching coronavirus restrictions. State television later said the sentence had been reduced to two years in a partial pardon. The U.S. led international condemnation with Secretary of State Antony Blinken calling the convictions unjust and affronts to democracy and justice. UN Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet said the conviction following a sham trial in secretive proceedings before a military-controlled court is nothing but politically motivated. Suu Kyi has been detained since the general staged a coup and ousted her government on February 1, ending the Southeast Asian country's brief period of democracy. South Africa is now firmly in the grips of a fourth wave of COVID-19 that's being driven by Omicron variant. Queen Rivera will give us the details live. Yes, Queenie? Elsie, South Africa has been accelerating its vaccination drive as Omicron variant causes a fourth wave of COVID-19 infections, with officials urging people to get vaccinated without further delays. A sharp rise of 16,055 daily new cases was recorded on Friday, showing a five times increase compared to 2,828 recorded a week before. Moreover, 25% of the COVID tests have conducted return positive. This is in comparison to about 2% positive tested two weeks before. According to South Africa President Cyril Ramaphosa, the country experiences a never-before-seen surge since the pandemic began. He calls out the citizens to get vaccinated. Currently, South Africa has enough supplies of Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. The country targets a 70% fully vaccinated population by March 2022. Meanwhile, despite the significant increase in COVID infections, the death rate remain, remains proportionately low. Elsie? Queenie, are there any specific steps being taken to urge people to get the jab? 
ESLC. Some business, such as health insurance company Discovery, has implemented a compulsory vaccination policy. MTN, the largest telecommunications company in Africa, plans to implement the same starting next month. While President Ramaphosa has hinted at making the COVID vaccines mandatory, there is no further details regarding this. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Queenie Rivera, live from Singapore. Better.com, a U.S. mortgage company, is under scrutiny after the CEO has fired 15% of its workforce in a single Zoom meeting. R.K. Liorca will tell us why, live. Yes, R.K.? Yes, LZ Better.com CEO Vishal Garg's decision to fire more than 900 employees over Zoom meeting has gone viral and has gained enormous criticisms. Apparently, some employees has recorded the call and posted it on social media platforms, including Instagram and TikTok. Garg cited issues with staff performance, productivity, and market were some of the reasons behind the mass firing. Comments flooded with outpouring of sympathy on social media for those who lost their jobs and criticisms to Better.com CEO saying it was cold, harsh, and a horrible move, especially that Christmas is approaching. According to Gemma Dale, lecturer in employment law and business studies at Liverpool John Morris University in the UK, the move was not empathetic and was no way to lead an organization. Meanwhile, LC Fortune magazine confirmed that CEO Garg was the author of a previously written anonymous blog post in which he accused at least 250 laid-off workers at his firm of stealing, claiming eight or more hours of work while only working for two. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, R.K. Yorka, live from Bangkok, Thailand. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. Hassan and his mother in Ghana, Africa, who are both visually impaired, wishes to have a bread and butter instead of just depending on others for their daily needs. Members Church of God International did something that made their wish come true. Nina Armilio has the story. Visually impaired person because of the coma. And my mother do the same thing because of her advanced age. Philip has been living with an impaired vision for 26 years. The doctors he had consulted with said that glaucoma cost him his eyesight. He had gone from hospital to hospital for a cure, but to no avail. That time, uh, when I completed Jesus, that was in 1995. So I came down to Wakia here, and then I was visiting hospitals, open hospitals. Unfortunately, I lost the left eye and the right eye to her to be operated upon to also to prevent it. Philip's dad has passed away. Now it's her mother at her old age who takes care of him alone because of his disability. Cecilia also has blurred vision. This is why most of the time they cannot go outdoors and just rely on help from their neighbors. At times to family members, which hardly comes. I've become used to it. I thank you because you are now you are sleeping on an empty stomach that you wake up in the middle of the night and you find it very difficult to sleep again. Philip and his mother live in a small room in Labadi, Accra, Ghana, Africa. From little to no income, 
their monthly rent is also their worry. Philip would like to sell fish so that he could provide for their daily needs. Because there are items that are needed every day. I think when we set up that business, uh, I believe Obama could daily come from it. For members Church of God International, this is an opportune time to do good. They gladly surprised Philip and Cecilia by granting their wish. Now they can put up a small business and have daily income. Now Philip will no longer have to sleep with an empty stomach. We thank God for making it possible for us to witness this day. We are extremely grateful to Him for the provision of daily food. And we remain thankful to Him for His protection and many things that He continues to do for us. We thank God once again. Members Church of God International is grateful to God for another good chance to help people in need. And because MCGI cares, good deeds will continue and flourish with God's help and mercy. Before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. It says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. the reasons behind the news December 7, 2021. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Emangelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. To quote our economic managers, the country's economic performance has exceeded expectations in 2021. The road ahead remains challenging, but we assure the Filipino people that we have all the elements in place to recover quickly and strongly from the pandemic. So, we have Pfizer, Pfizer, this latest Nikkei Asia COVID-19 Recovery Index is a clear indication that we have successfully contained the highly transmissible Delta variant.